Today we've got a special one, I think, because this is one of the coolest subjects when it comes to routing wood in woodworking, which is what does a spiral bit do? What does a compression bit do? And what are all those versus like a straight bit, for example? So today I'm gonna to talk to you about upcut, downcut, compression. We've got tons of high speed footage, like tons of it, that we're gonna be able to really show what these do. Um, and we're gonna be able to talk about when you use which type in which situation. So let's come on into the router table and let me show you what we're working with. All right, we're gonna go through what these are very quickly and then we are going to get into our high speed footage to really show you how these things work. Quickly, I wanna thank Bits and Bits, a longtime supporter of the channel. Favorite place to get router bits. That's where all these came from. There's a 15% off discount code in the description in the pinned comment. This is a straight bit. This has been what people used for years and years and years, but people started to figure out that cutting wood at an angle works way better. It's the same thing when you angle your hand plane and taking a shearing cut versus a straight cut is much, much better. So here we have the compression bits, the first quarter inch or a little bit more cut up and then the rest of the bit cuts down. Uh, I have them here in half inch and quarter inch size. These are upcut bits. You can tell because they look like a drill bit. They clear chips up and they pull, the forces are pulling the wood up. Uh, again, half inch, quarter inch size in both coated and non-coated versions. We have the down cut bit here. I didn't get a non-coated version of that one in half inch. And then here's the quarter inch sizes. All right, so generally what is the difference? Well, first let's look at some high speed footage of a straight bit. As we look at this high speed footage, the one thing I really want to make you aware of is watch the force of the bit. Watch how much this wood, which is being held down by four hold down clamps, uh, is moving. In fact, in the second clip here, uh, when we were taking a second pass, you can see the wood was bouncing around like you were dribbling a basketball. Now, part of the reason that straight bits are really not that great to use is one, look at this tear out. I mean, you can see from the wood that the tear out is pretty bad. And this is plywood granted, you know, when you use hardwoods, it's not going to be nearly as bad, especially straight grained, but it does get tear out and plywood is the worst for straight bits. It also takes this giant scoop. As you see, as it's cutting here, um, you can see that it's taking these massive scoops. And in fact, on this second pass here, you can just see how much wood flies off every time that cutter goes by. And that's just not efficient. It causes heat, uh, it causes burning. So, you know, straight bits are much more likely to burn your wood. And they really are just something that I only use when I need to hog out material in pieces that don't matter so I can save my other bits. But spiral bits have become so affordable that it, I just, there's no straight bits in my shop. This is the only one. And so when you get into spiral bits, you're gonna find that they create a shearing cut, which is much, much better. So let's talk about what types of spiral bits there are. All right, next we're gonna talk about down cut versus up cut, which are the most common types of spiral bits. Now, like I said before, you're creating a shearing cut. So let's look at down cuts first. These are the ones I use the most. Uh, I use them on the CNC for the dovetail alignment boards and a lot of things we do. Um, but most importantly, what you need to remember, the difference between down cut and up cut is the way that it is cutting and pushing the chips. Now with down cut, it is pushing down from the motor. So whether you're on your CNC mounted above or a router mounted above or a router table mounted below, it is cutting away from your motor. So as we look at this clip here, you can see that it is cutting down. You don't see a lot of chips coming up. You can see the, the shot is very clean. There's not a lot of sawdust in the air. And that's because it's creating a shear cut down. Now, the most important part about this is let's look at the edge of the plywood. So the edge of the plywood is super clean and looks really, really good. And so you can see that it's making this beautiful shearing cut that is pushing the wood fibers down instead of pulling them up. So when you're using a piece of very figured wood or definitely plywood and you want the edge facing you to look great, then you would want to use a down cut. Now the disadvantages to that is obviously it is putting pushing chips down. So you wouldn't want to just do a straight plunge with a down cut bit. If you were doing something where you did need to plunge, you would want to plunge while moving. So if you were just trying to do a hole, it might be better to go with an up cut. And we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. But as you can see, when this exits the wood, the edges, the top edges are perfectly crisp. So in a straight grained piece of wood, like a piece of walnut or oak, you're probably gonna be fine whether you use up cut or down cut. 
Um, but in anything with veneer, like plywood or something that is veneered, or something with a lot of figure where you're trying to maintain a great appearance, you'd want to use a down cut if you want that top edge to look great. You look at the disadvantages of a down cut, uh, it is going to give you the cleanest top edge, uh, but it's also, you do need to go a little bit slower with it. Now when you look at up cuts, you can see here, this looks terrible. This is an upcut bit, and look how much more sawdust there is. This is substantially more. You can see that it's just tearing the top veneer of this plywood to shreds. And you can see it's just pulling everything up. Now, this is a benefit when you're cutting handheld or on the router table, because sometimes it will pull the piece and keep it to your work surface, whether that's the bottom of your router or the top of your router table. And so that can be a, an added benefit to this. But when you're using anything that's highly figured or veneered, this is not the bit you're gonna to want to reach for. However, when you're doing mortises uh, and you're cutting from the connecting side, so let's say you were doing a through mortise and you wanted to cut all the way through your piece of wood, this is gonna be a great thing to plunge with. Not only like a drill bit is it lifting sawdust up as you can see in this clip, but it's also gonna keep your bottom edge looking really good. So when it exits the piece that is going to be shown, it's gonna keep that looking really, really good and crisp. And again, you know, if I was doing uh, a dado or a groove, if I was doing it in hardwood that had straight grain, I might reach for my upcut bit because it would allow a lot more chip evacuation and a cooler cut so I could cut faster. But if I was doing a dado or a groove that was in anything that risked being, having tear out happen to it, I'd reach for that down cut. The thing that you should notice between both of these clips of the upcut and down cut is the board is not chattering around like it was with the straight bit. That shearing cut makes such a difference. And so when you think about what you're gonna use this for, you wanna think about what is gonna be my show face. And like I said, with a mortise, you're plunging, you need to remove a ton of material and upcut's gonna be your best bet. But you wanna cut from the side that's gonna be covered by the shoulder where the tenon is inserted. Because on the other side where the tenon is gonna be exposed, uh, you want that to be your cleanest edge. Whereas with a down cut, you know, down cut uh, is something I almost always use with plywood, unless I'm using a compression bit, we'll get to that in a second. Or if I'm cutting a date or a groove, I would use a down cut and go slower, uh, unless, you know, it was in hardwood. And in hardwood, you have more chance of burning and less chance of tear out, so maybe I'd go with an upcut to evacuate more chips and keep that cut cooler. Heat, which is the enemy of sharpness, heat is the number one enemy of sharpness, is something that you do wanna worry about and you uh, wanna remember that chip load, which we will have a video coming out soon on chip load as well as heat and how it dulls blades. That's all gonna be one video, but that is why Bits Bits sells these Astra coated bits. Those are the darker ones you saw there in the beginning. Uh, they are absolutely phenomenal at staying cooler, thus having a life that is four times that of an uncoated bit. And again, in the chip load and uh, coating video, we are gonna show that using an infrared camera. We've got a really cool FLIR camera coming to this, so that's gonna be incredible. So, how do we combine both these bits? Let's talk about compression bits. Compression bits I have become very fond of, and here's why. On these half inch bits, the first five eighths is an up cut, and then the rest of the bit is a down cut. On these quarter inch bits, the first quarter inch is an up cut and the rest of the bit is a down cut. So let's take a look at some high speed footage. One of the important things to know is that you need to go below the up cut when you're cutting with a compression bit to take advantage of what it is used for. So here's an example of some high speed footage where we had the bit set too high. So as you can see, there's a ton of tear out. It looks exactly like the up cut bit. And that's because you can see as it exits the wood here that we had the compression portion of the bit set too high. So what does it look like when it's done correctly? So here's what it looks like when you put it at the correct depth. And I'm gonna just show you the beginning of this clip because the rest is too dusty to be able to see. But you can see that there's the bottom portion of the bit is scooping chips up and the top portion of the bit is throwing chips down. Now, when we look at this bit cutting as it's moving towards us, you can see that the top portion looks just like the down cut and the bottom portion, you can see the bit just sticking out from the side here on this cut is just scooping wood up. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. Now it's a great bit, uh, it allows you to move a lot faster, but you do need to be taking really deep passes to take advantage of this. I think in typical plunge situations, 
Uh, I would reach more for an upcut bit on anything that wasn't plywood. Uh, but anything where I'm doing plywood, I tend to reach for my compression bits more now. Uh, that and my down cut bits. We, we tend to use down cut bits a lot, especially on through cuts where the board is supported underneath by either my spoils board or a uh, backer board. This brings up an important point. Whenever in doubt, make sure you use backer board or a test piece. You wanna make sure that you're getting good results and you're not ruining work pieces that you've been working on for a long time. Obviously, spiral bits really excel in everything. I mean, they're all better than straight bits, but especially end grain, veneered, and figured wood, uh, they are something you really wanna have in your toolbox. And these quarter inch bits coated are in the low 20s, and especially with that discount code down below, they're very affordable. The coated bits last forever. So they are really, really nice to use. All right, so let me summarize, because I know I have a tendency to dump a lot of information on you sometimes. Straight bit bad, spiral bit good. Just kidding. Um, let's say this. Uh, Upcut's gonna pull a board towards you. It's gonna evacuate chips faster. It's also gonna make the edge that is closer to your motor look not as nice. Down cut, it's gonna push everything away from you. It can cause heat buildup. You need to go slower, but it's gonna make that edge closest to your motor muy bueno. Compression bit, a lot more forces, but removes material faster. Uh, it creates a great edge, both top and bottom, but you need to be taking full passes below the upcut portion of the bit. Um, I think the only problem I've had with compression bits when I'm doing CNC projects is that if I have small pieces with small tabs, it tends to want to pull those pieces up and can break the tabs. So on those where I'm doing small pieces, I've kept using the down cut bit, which is phenomenal for plywood. Down cut and compression is what I use for plywood. I almost never use up cut for plywood. Um, and then when it comes to straight grained hardwoods, you can kind of get away with either as long as your bits not super dull, but figured wood, melamine, veneered wood, plywood, you really need to be using a down cut or a compression bit to uh, get the best effect. Other than that, thanks to Bits and Bits for supporting this video. Obviously long time supporter of the channel and my favorite place to get router bits. Really love them, discount code below. If you wanna support the channel, head over to the Cats and Moses store. You can pick up one of my new aprons, uh, a dovetail jig or a stop block. Stay safe in the shop. There's an airplane. Have a wonderful day.